So Zachariah is one of those great prophets that we have uh, in the scripture that says a lot about the end times. But today we're going to be looking at partly what he says uh, about Israel and look at how it is affecting us somehow today. One of the things you have heard me say many times is that looking at the right clock is very important, not the wrong clock. If your clock is broken and you don't know, and you are looking at a broken clock for the right time, you probably would miss all your appointments before you would realize it. And partly what is affecting believers today is that we also are looking at the wrong clock in many ways. When we look at end times and all that events that are scripturally linked. And so looking at the right clock and looking at a walking clock is very important, especially in these days that the spiritual clock uh, is sort of, we can use the word, restarted. Uh, for some years, it's been as if the scriptural events prophesied and written down were not being seen. And so uh, believers or Christians at large have been basically, you know, uh, fellowshipping and just having a good time. But right now, with events that are ongoing, everybody knows that scriptural events have been uh, not only jump-started, but have gone into a very strong phase that nobody can deny that the things happening around us are prophesied. So both, uh, uh, how to say, Muslims and uh, people of no... Uh, religious affiliation, all know that the things ongoing uh, are prophesied as uh, scriptural events that are happening around us right now. Earlier in our discussion, we spoke about the horses, all right? The horses that were spoken of in the book of Revelation, different colored horses. Uh, and so, you see these things happening and everybody knows that yes, the Bible uh, relevance is again being manifested. But then what we're gonna look at in this book of Zechariah is very, very important because one of the most important statements about the end times events is that the heart of men will fail them. The heart of many will fail them. People are going to lose courage. People are going to become weak. People will get tired of living. People will become so afraid of the things that will be happening that you know, people will just be giving up the ghost. People will just be surrendering to death. People will find no reason to continue to live. People will also lose faith. And so the scripture says, when the son of man comes back, shall he find faith? Will people still believe in? The Bible says the events that will be coming will scare people to their bones. And so we've been preaching about not being afraid, but trusting in the most high and seeing the things that are already spoken. Uh, Yahusha, our Messiah, while he was with the disciples said to them, I am revealing these things to you in the book of Matthew 24, it says, I am revealing these things to you so that you will not be afraid when you see them happen. You will know that I already told you they will happen. You know, when you have seen a movie, uh, not for the first time, you are not going to be so uh, apprehensive of what the next scene would be 
because you've seen the movie before. For example, there is one movie that is very nice. Um, the movie 2012, all right? If you've not seen it, it's good to see. Movie 2012. If you are watching it for the first time, you're going to be on the edge of your chair because you are anticipating what is the next scene, what is the next scene, what is gonna happen. You see the, the, the earthquake breaking everywhere, destroying cities, and then you see the flood coming and you're wondering where next is this flood going to overflow? You see people running to the hills, you're thinking, will the flood get there? Oh, if the flood is gonna get there. And when the flood gets there, you're, oh, sorry for them. And then, you know, each scene moves you. But after you've seen that movie for one, two, three times, you're no more going to be on the edge of your chair when you're watching it. Because you already know the event. You already know the scenes. You already know where it's going to end. And so as believers, since we already are told that these things would happen, we should not be overtaken by fear, nor grief. But rather, we should prepare people psychologically, physically, so that they are ready for the events. And that is part of the prophetic ministry. Part of the prophetic ministry is to prepare people psychologically for the events that will happen around them. And of course, uh, prophetic ministry is not only to tell people what is going to happen, you know, to foretell things. No, it's also about calling people to righteousness, calling people to the most high, who is their existence, who is their lives. But also it's about preparing the minds of people, either for good or for bad. If you look at the ministry of Jeremiah, you are so, you know, um, surprised. Notice that Jeremiah was called basically to prepare the mind of the kingdom for invasion that will surely happen. And all Jeremiah was telling them was that invasion is coming. You are going to be uprooted from your homes. Many of you will be killed. Children will be massacred. Pregnant women will be cut open and the fetuses thrown out and smashed on the ground. Your... Uh, your, 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 your senators will be killed. Your, your leading gray hair men will be killed. Your fine young women will be taken as sex slaves. Your young men will be taken to become laborers and they will all be dragged uh, 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 and taken to Babylon. And he tells them why these things are going to happen. He tells them these things are going to happen because you have forsaken your most high and you have left your, the commandments that he gave you, the way of life that he gave you, and you have also spat on his face. Therefore, he is angry with you. He is no more interested in your sacrifices because your sacrifices mean nothing when you continue to live in a wrong way, breaking his rules, and yet you just offer sacrifices. And he says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because you have not turned from your sins, these things are going to happen to you. And so you notice that Jeremiah was alone in that ministry. Because Jeremiah alone was the only one saying, trouble is coming, trouble is coming, change your ways, change your ways. And the Bible tells us that other over 100 prophets were prophesying good. They were telling the king, nothing is going to happen. Oh, the Lord is happy with us. Oh, all the sacrifices we offer, they ascend to heaven. You see the smoke? The smoke is going up to heaven. God is happy with us. All the over 100 prophets were prophesying good. They said to the king, nobody will invent, invade this land. This land is a holy land where the most high dwell. He says he would dwell in Zion. So why would he allow anybody to invade and take Jerusalem? Nothing will happen to Jerusalem. We are good. We are the people of God. He is our father. He will protect us. He will take care of us. So Jeremiah was called to prepare the minds of the people for the things that were coming. If you go back to some of our preaching in the past three, four, five years, six years ago, 
you will see that we have been preparing the minds of those listening to us about the things that are happening now. We have been doing so, preparing the minds of the people. Part of the reason being the fact that looking at our world, people have been well, well trained to live against the laws of God. Really, evil has become good and good has become evil. Righteousness has become sort of outdated, wrong way of living, not interesting. Even preachers don't preach it anymore. Everybody just tells you of love, 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 love. So nobody is interested in the ways of the kingdom. Therefore, you surely would expect that the things that are happening right now will be allowed to happen by heaven. But today, Zechariah chapter 4, let me read from verse 1. My interest, you are going to see in a short while as we read from verse 1. And the angel that talked with me came again and worked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. All right? So realize here, an angel used to come and talk with this man. The ministry of angels is being seen as no more in existence by many. Many don't think that angels can visit and speak with people, but they do. And look at what happened here. He woke this man up as if you wake a man out of sleep. So the man was sleeping and an angel came and tapped him, pom, 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 Zach, get up, get up. I want to show you something. And so Zachariah got up. The ministry of angels is going to increase more. I've been saying this for over one year, actually, that the ministry of angels will increase. But that does not mean that devils will not be doing the same thing. So it is important for you to actually know when you are being enticed by devil and when it is the real angels of righteousness coming to show you things and lead you. Verse two, and he said to me, what see is that? And I said, I have looked and behold, I see candlestick, all gold with a bow upon the top of it. And his seven lamb Thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. Okay, so seven lampstands. Today you have heard some people talk about nine lampstands, no more seven. That is evil. The scripture tells us only about seven. Even the book of Isaiah talks about the seven spirits of the Most High in which the presence of the Most High dwells. Seven spirits. Everything the Most High uh, presents in the scripture as imperfection are presented in sevens. Okay? In sevens. The days are created in sevens, weak. And one of those extra biblical texts that we read, when you read the book of Jubilees, which is a very nice book to read, you realize everything is presented in sevens, weeks. Even the calculation of times were presented in weeks, in sevens. Again, if you look at the book of Daniel, when the angel was talking to Daniel, he says, 70 weeks in sevens. 77s have been assigned for your people, 70 weeks. So people only say weeks and they forget is about seven. So whenever you see people talking about nine, oh, nine candle lamps, no, it is evil. It's not from the Most High. The Most High does his perfection in sevens, not nines. All right? Remember that. So he says to him, I see 
a candle lamp stand and it is called menorah. Okay, that's the word they use for it. Let me show you what it looks like. Right? It looks like this. Okay, this is the same thing that you see in the book of Revelations, chapter one. And in the book of Revelation, chapter one, you notice that when John saw this, he also saw the person of the resurrected Messiah in it. So in other words, it is the complete presence of the Most High, perfected in sevens. So Isaiah tells us about the seven spirits of the Most High in which the presence of the Most High dwell. And Jesus, Yahusha Mashiach, is manifested in Revelations, okay, chapter one, and he's having the seven lampstands all embedded in him, all right? So that tells you it's about seven, not nine. Anybody saying nine, forget that person. Very important. Okay, so he sees the seven lampstands, which represents the spirit, the complete presence of the spirit of the Most High. Okay, and then he says in verse three, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left thereof. This is verse number three, okay? Zacharias is still explaining what he saw. After the lampstand, he's seen two olive trees, one tree by the left side of this lampstand and one tree by the, lap, uh, by the right side of this lampstand. Verse four, so I answered and spake the angel that talked with me saying, what are these master? And the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, knowest thou not what these be? I said, no, my Lord. Verse six, then he answered and said unto me, this is, the word of Yahuwah to Zerubbabel, saying, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said Yahuwah of hosts, said the Lord of hosts. So if you want to title this discussion, it is very simple. Not by power, not by might. Not by power, not by might. Salvation will come. Deliverance will come. But it's not going to be by what man can do. It's going to be by the invasion of the spirit of Most High Yahuwah in the times that we are going into. And then verse 7 says, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying grace, grace unto it. All right? And then let me explain before we go forward. I'm stopping at verse 7. Now, it's very important that we recognize what is going on here. Uh, I remember something that we discussed on Wednesday, somebody was talking about uh, the two witnesses in the book of Revelation. So we, we, the, the person was saying it is China and uh, Russia, and we were trying to say it is now. So let me go back to explain something about this. Notice this. Whenever you talk about those two witnesses, you must remember, like we said, they represent a people, okay? Today, I'm going to present them as being Israel. First, if you look at the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse number 17, and I read for you, he says, and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive were grafted in among them, 
and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive. In verse 24 of the same Romans chapter 11, he says, for if thou were cut out of the olive, which is wild by nature, and we are grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural olive branches be grafted into their own tree? So what does that tell you? In the book of Revelation, chapter 11, where we see the two witnesses, uh, in verse 4 of that revelation, the Bible says, these are the two olive trees, two olive trees and the two candle sticks standing before the God of the earth. Notice that they, they are called two, two candle sticks. All right. In other words, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. But why two? Why, why is the scripture calling them two in that book of Revelation? The scripture is referring to Judah and Ephraim. And this is the same thing that is said to Zachariah. He says, this lampstand is in the midst of two olive trees, one by the left, one by the right. And that is Judah and Ephraim. Notice at the point Zachariah is making this uh, proclamation. Israel is already divided into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Northern kingdom is 10 tribes, southern kingdom two tribes. So the candlestick is standing in the midst of them, the most high in the midst of Israel. Notice that in the camp of Israel, in the wilderness, in the book of Exodus, the tabernacle was placed in the middle of the camp. In other words, the most high dwelling in the midst of Israel. So even as they have been divided, yet the most high dwells among them. He is their God. So he says to Zerubbabel, this presence of the most high is in your midst. And he says to him, no matter what the difficulty you face, what is the mountain? Mountain symbolizes difficulty, problems, troubles. He says, it shall be made a plain, no matter the difficulty you face as my people, because the olive symbolizes the people of Israel. I read another place in the book of Judges. If you go to the book of Judges, chapter nine, verse nine, in this book of Judges, the, the, the scripture is giving a proverb how certain trees were being asked to become king of trees and rule trees. And when he came to the portion of olive tree in the verse nine of book of Judges chapter nine, he says, but the olive tree answered and said to them, should I leave my fatness wherewith by me, they honor God and man and go to be promoted over trees Olive tree produces oil. And that oil is the thing that is used for honoring God and for honoring men. Notice that today we all use oil. Oil makes you beautiful. Oil keeps your body lubricated. Even when we use perfume, perfume is a mixture of oil. Oil makes you smell nice. And notice that oil also symbolizes the anointing, the spirit of the most high, the presence of the most high. So you look at the world, the world is being blessed by Israel. The promise of Abraham is that the seed of Abraham shall be a blessing to the whole world. And up till today, the seed of Abraham has continued to be a blessing for the world. You may not know this, but I want you to go and check if I'm saying the truth or not, most of the people that actually are seeking the most high in spirit and in truth have a link to Abraham. Most of the places where the world resources are being taken from, the people have a link with Abraham. Most of the nations where natural resources are found in very great abundance, the people 
have a link to Abraham. Go and check. And you will find out, even in the world religion that dominate the world today, the people are linked to Abraham. The earth is being blessed because of the seed of Abraham. There's no doubt about it. Almost every wonderful thing, good thing that the earth enjoys today comes from the places, locations where the seed of Abraham is being. Even the people that worship the most high the most, they go and check all of them out. They all have link to the seed of Abraham. And that is an amazing thing. And this is why these people must begin to not follow everything that the system of the world teaches because it's not going to favor them. It's not going to favor them. They must not follow everything that the system. He says to Zerubbabel, there is no mountain before you that will not be made a plain. It's not by power, it's not by might. It's not going to be what people will do, but it's going to be by the move of the spirit. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Most High, will move upon people and they will do things you wouldn't think that they will do, given the circumstances a few years back, a few months back. There is a move of the spirit right now, a move of the presence of God moving upon the world, and people are saying what you would not expect them to say before. Why? There is a spiritual move that has come upon the earth, and you are going to see the changes happening. I was, again, watching the news, and I realized that over several nations are rejecting to basically put a stamp on the vote of the United Nations about what is going on in Africa. They have sent envoys from European Union and all that, and they said, no, we're not going to join you to vote. We abstain. Why? There is a move of the spirit. Now, look at this. He says, these are the two olive branches. Two olive. Now, I love the way the book of Romans put it. Romans says, if the branch that was wild and was cut off and grafted into the natural, I like the word natural, wild, natural, something that was not supposed to be a part of something was taken and made a part of it just to prove that God can. I need you to see something here. God did something just to prove that he can do all things. In other words, God took what is not a part of something and made it a part of that thing because he can, because he is the almighty, because he has all the ability to do it. He can. He is the one that created. He can. And Apostle says, if he took what is not natural and made it to be a part of what is natural, how much more? will he now restore the natural back to its original tree? How much more? Isn't that much easier? If I can take what is not naturally a part of something and make it part of that thing, how much more easier would it be for me to take what is already a part of that thing and make it a part of that thing? Let me put it this way. If I can take a metal and make it a part of wood, is it not easier for me to take wood and basically make part of wood and join them together seamlessly? It's much easier, right? Because for me to put metal and make it a part of wood, it's easier for a wood to be made a part of wood. And so, First thing I want us to establish is that these two olive branches are part of Israel. What does that tell you? There is a move of God right now that is going around the world, waking up all the seed of Israel in every part of the world where they are. In the Philippines, in Indonesia, in, you know, Thailand, wherever they are. Malaysia, wherever you find them there is an awakening going on 
this olive tree, their branches are rising. The book of Ezekiel 37 tells us that this will happen. It says dry bones will begin to wake up and look for their own bones. So this is one thing that is going on. But there is a mountain before them. Notice that they are waking up when this mountain is before them. Notice that this, these olive branches are standing, but there is a great mountain. In fact, the angel says, what is this great mountain? He calls the mountain great. He didn't call it a small hill, but great, great. So if you look at what is happening and what is yet to happen, it is a great mountain, great that the people wouldn't know how to handle it. In fact, Zerubbabel was in shock for what he was facing. If you go back to read the book of Ezra, the book of Nehemiah, you realize that Zerubbabel and his men we are in so much, so much challenges, so much challenge. They just came back from Babylon and they are trying to rebuild and establish themselves as a nation. And there was chaos everywhere. There were other people that were already in the land that don't want them to be established as a nation. They feel they are a threat. There were other nations surrounding them that want them to remain poor and remain scattered so that they will keep milking and, 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 and taking whatever they could take from the land. There were other people around them that did not even want them to build the house of God in the right way. And so they said, we want to come and build together with you so that they will keep scattering the work so that they are not able to establish the house of God and worship God in the right way. Notice that that is going on right now. There are certain people, Apostle Paul says, they crept in unawares, but they are not a part of the church, but they have crept into the church and they are making sure that this building of the Most High is not erected in the right way. Apostle Paul calls them wolves in sheep clothing. So what is their job? Keep scattering the work. Keep making sure that people don't worship the most high rightly. Keep making sure that the problems are insurmountable. When Israel came out of Egypt, the book of Exodus tells us these people were called mixed multitude. They were among them. What was their job? They kept making sure that there was a tumult among the people. They keep raising complaints and complaints and complaints and complaints. They keep making sure that they call Moses a bad name and, you know, destroy the reputation of Moses. Make sure that Moses don't become acceptable as the right leader for the people. They make sure that whatever direction to keep the laws and the commandments of the Most High is not followed by everybody. They will say, oh, no, 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 these things are difficult. No, nobody can do these things. Why tell us to do these things? When there is a small need, they will magnify it and make it huge. Oh, people are hungry. Oh, people need food. Oh, a lot are dying of starvation. They keep bringing issues. Why? They want to make sure that the worship of the Most High is not the way it should be. And again, in Christianity right now, there are a lot of people that this is their job. They keep believers distracted from doing things according to the plan of Mosai, from keeping the commandments of Mosai. They say, oh, no, 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 these things are not important. Uh, just have Jesus in your heart, that's enough. Uh, don't worry about following whatever uh, the Most High has said you should follow. That is their job. Because as long as believers are not walking with the Most High, the mountain will keep them in that single location. They will not move ahead. They will continue to be intimidated. They will continue to be humiliated. They will continue to be killed. They will continue to remain in the place where they cannot attain the desire of heaven as their destiny. 
But the father says, what is this mountain before Zerubbabel? It shall be made a plain. And he says, it is not by power. It is not by might, but by my spirit. There is a move of the father that is coming. Even though we look at all the great events that are designed and we see where these events are leading, we were before talking about the wars, we were talking about the price of wheat and, and how hunger and starvation is going to come in into our world. Already it is happening. It, this has been prophesied many, many times. Several years ago, we've been saying to people, plan, plan, get a land, plant food, drill water somewhere, you know, so that food and water, you are not going to depend on what you buy because time will come that you are not going to be able to buy it. Even if you want to, you may not have enough money to do that. And again, I will begin to say, as I have said before, I remember some sometime last year, I had this vision and I was talking to Dr. Uche about it, planting vegetables that are not just vegetable, but they are medicinal, medicinal vegetables. You have a name for it. What do we call it? Um, herbs. 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 Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, herbs. Okay, no vegetable, herbs. Look for herbs because they serve two purposes. They do the work of vegetable and they also provide medicinal effects. They do two purposes. These are more important these days than just vegetable. In fact, back to our passage, Zachariah chapter four, the angel was saying to Prophet Zach, he says to him that a move of heavens is coming. And that is the spirit of the Most High back into the midst of Israel to make things that are impossible possible. Notice that Israel at that point is divided in two. Okay? Divided in two. And is as if the Most High is no more there, but he says the Most High is there. But his move is coming in a stronger way to make the difficulties that they face become easy. A certain prophet was speaking about possible scenario of third world war. And he was saying that a lot of punishments will be decimated, you know, will be wasted and all that. And I smiled. In fact, that is when this passage came to my heart. And I tell you the truth, the presence of the Most High will be so powerfully strong in some of these nations where the people, the seed of Abraham are, that whatever is going to be happening will not affect them. Oh yeah, it will not affect them. And I want you to hear it again so that your heart is not melted. Your heart must not fail you. Believe me, heavens is rising to fight for his people. The spirit of the Most High is going to be in the midst of his people and will defend his people. Oh, yes. He will surely defend his people. Let me read down so that I, I can conclude sooner. Verse 8, he says, Moreover, the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel, have laid the foundation of this house and his hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Okay. Verse 10, for who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. In those seven, sorry, with those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord 
which run to and fro through the whole earth, okay? The seven spirits that are called the eyes of Yah that runs through the earth, okay? Verse 11, then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right and upon the left? And he said unto me, the olive branches which through The only, okay, let me, let me read again verse 12. And I answered and said again unto him, what be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered and said unto me, thou knowest not what these be, my Lord. And I said, no, then he said, these are the anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth, the anointed ones. Now, these are the anointed ones. When you go back to look at the anointed ones, of course, it can lead you to several people who were anointed. Many people have been anointed, set apart by God. But of course, when we look at those that are called his anointed, First of all, you notice that Israel is called the anointed of God as a nation. In fact, when you read it in the book of Psalm, the Bible says, I think it's, it's Psalm 105 or so. It says, when Israel was small in number, when they migrated from one place to another, it's talking about when Jacob was traveling from, from uh, uh, Haran, back to his land. He says, the most I gave a commandment and said, touch not my prophets and do my anointed ones no harm. So when you go back to look at the anointed one, you notice it's about Israel and the seed of Israel all over the earth are considered the most high is anointed. It actually means to be set apart. Many times when we look at the anointed one, we always think of seeing somebody doing miracles somewhere and preaching somewhere. No, 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 no. These people, anointed basically means set apart, holy ones, set apart, separated. And when you look at all the nations of the earth, the most high clearly said that he has set Israel apart, separated, as his priest for the earth. Israel is actually the priest of the earth, set apart. When you go back and look at the blessing spoken to Ham, Shem, Japheth, that blessing, it was written that Shem, God shall be the God of Shem. Remember that God shall be the God of Shem. And that blessing continued from Shem to Eber, to Abraham, to Jacob. That is the blessing going through there, all the way to Jacob. So we see that this is about the people set apart for the Most High. They are the olive branch. But when they are divided into two nations, the Most High still recognizes that they are divided into nations and call them the two lamb, I mean the two uh, olive trees. Now, someone can also look at it and look at these two as being two individuals. All right? Somebody can look at it as being two individuals. Two individuals. That's also okay. There's no problem with that. But today, I am looking at it in general as Israel. Israel divided into two nations. But today, Israel is no more uh, as, you know, a nation as they should be. They are scattered. In fact, they are called the hidden ones. The hidden ones. Why? Because now they are scattered into different places and many of them are hidden. Many of them are not known. Even many of them don't know who they are. The hidden ones. But today, our message today is number one, no matter what we see, how great, how enormous,
the plan of the evil ones are, there is a move of the spirit. The Holy Spirit, the angels of the Father are already at work. And in this book, we see that they clearly are saying that the mountain will be leveled. It shall be made a plain. The mountain shall be made a plain. The mountain shall be made a plain. The mountain shall be made a plain. Now, let me read a place in Zacharias, the same Zacharias chapter 9. Let me read verse 13 and 15, or rather 13 to 15. He says, when I have bent Judah for me, fill the bow with Ephraim and raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and make thee as the sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine and they shall be filled with bowls, bowls, okay? And as the corners of the altar. Notice verse 13, he says, God will bend Judah like a bow, and Ephraim will become the arrow. What does that tell you? Judah will be bent like a bow, and Ephraim become the what? The arrows, the arrows. This is not saying that they will be gathered first, but this is saying that both Judah and Ephraim, wherever they are, will find themselves teaming up and standing against who? Greece. Greece. All right. Notice what that verse 13 says. When I have bent Judah, I made Ephraim to be uh, uh, arrows. O Zion, I will turn you against who? Greece. I made thee as the sword of a mighty man. He says, the Lord shall be seen over them. So in chapter four, the presence of the Most High is standing in between them. In chapter nine, he says, they will be bent as able Whenever you bend any wood, it's not a happy thing, right? Bending is not a funny thing, but it's a painful thing. Now, what is this symbolizing here? Uh, again, I will point back to not only Africa, but to certain islands where the seed of Israel is. A bending is happening right now. And certain have been made arrows. You are going to see a certain kind of confrontation arise between certain of these islands and Africa with the European hegemonic rule. Expect it. It's going to happen. But in this, when it begins to happen, says God, will be seen over them. And notice what funny story here, funny statement here, not story, funny statement. He says they shall overcome with slings, slingshot, slingshot, slingshot. In other words, they don't have the right weaponry. They don't have the right munitions to compare with what Greece will lift up. And of course, when you look at all the island nations, you look at Africa, none of, they don't have nothing to compete with Europeans. But he says, the Lord shall be seen in their midst. 
and with those nothing, bow and arrow, they will overcome. Something is going to happen that will precipitate these things. Now, am I saying it's going to happen right away, immediately? I don't know. Will what is going on in Russia lead into distance? I'm not going to say absolutely right now. But you will begin to see something about Putin. Notice that Putin has been providing shelter for certain non-European people that are not being received. For example, Poland did not receive African uh, refugees. Romania and the rest of all these people are turning their backs on African refugees. Guess who is receiving them? Putin, Russia, is receiving them, giving them special shelter, giving them food, giving them medication. That should send you a message. That should send you a message because you are now going to see a different behavior in the mindset of African leadership. And that's already why a lot are not voting in the UN. So is what is going on going to lead into this kind of stuff? Maybe, I'm not saying that it must precipitate into it right away. Maybe, maybe. But we pray that of course, you know, as I'm seated here, I don't want outblown because it's not easy to carry family and run. Guess how far my homeland is. Can you imagine the cost for me to carry six people and pay plane ticket and run? It's not easy. So we pray that it doesn't. But what if? But what if everyone must have his mind prepared? We are not warmongers, but we're looking at what is happening and being real with reality. What if? What if? He says, the Lord shall be seen over them. And his arrow, the Lord's arrow, shall go forth as a lightning. It's not going to be their slingshots. They will be holding their slingshots, but their slingshots is not going to be the thing that will do the job. Verse 14 says, the Lord shall be in the midst of them, and his arrows shall move like a lightning, fly like a lightning. You're going to see something greater than supersonic rockets. Oh, yeah. You're going to see lightnings that will move from above and do certain things that will shock the earth. Let me tell you something. People still don't know that the Most High will do something about the sun activity. You think the Most High is going to keep quiet and just leave that sun activity just going on underground? Oh, no. Oh, no. The Most High is going to do something about it. Oh, yeah. Certain of, you know, like the hopper activity that is, you know, displacing weather activities and all that. The Most High is going to do something about it. There are certain things that the world is doing, put up in space, that angels are going to move against. Because these things are changing weather patterns and, and causing a whole lot of disruptions for the life of people on the face of the earth. Angels are going to move against several of these activities. He says, mm. arrows will fly like lightning. All right? Now, it's very important that we know that this is going to happen. Mm. So, in conclusion on that, in verse 15, he says, the Lord of hosts shall defend them and they shall devour and subdue with slingshots. They will have slingshots, but the Lord of hosts is he 
that will defend them. It's not going to be by power. It's not going to be by might. But whatever you see planned by the enemy, the Lord of hosts will subdue them. Hallelujah. The presence of the Most High will subdue them. I think I've come to the end of this discussion. The reason why I had to touch a little bit of political events going on is so that your heart will be at rest. And for you to also know that more will come because more surely will come. Thanks. Where does that leave us as a people? Number one, be settled in your mind that no matter what happens, you will not be moved. Praise Number two, make a plan mm. of things you can do. One, two, three, in case things go haywire. That does not mean being afraid. It means you have a plan. Mm. All right? Very important. There is an adage that says, he that does not plan, plans to fail. Okay? And that is true. Make a plan. One, two, three, A, Y, Z. Can do this and do this and do this. Make these plans prayerfully. Okay? That's number two. Number three. Be prepared. Be prepared to act if you must act. That's it. But in all, remember, the Most High is also doing his. So I'm not telling you now to pack up and run. No, that's not what I'm saying. Because I'm here. I'm here with you. Right? I'm not running yet. <laughs> I have my mind prepared. And that's why I say the same to you. I have my mind prepared that whatever, I'm still glorifying the Most High. I'm still thanking Him because I see what He has already shown us in the world. And I have my wife also her mind prepared understanding what is going on. And finally, being willing, psychologically willing and ready to do what you must do if need be. So don't run as if, you know, something is pursuing you, you are in a man. side is in charge. Hallelujah. As the world is doing theirs, heaven is also doing theirs. So be prayerful. Why are you supposed to be prayerful? Two reasons. Number one, when the evil ones are planning to do something and are doing something and it's not according to the timeline of heaven, your prayer is what will stop them because it's not their time. If it's their time, your prayer will not stop them. Okay? So prayer will stop them if it is not a time allocated to them to do what they are doing. Let me explain. You remember Job? Satan was assigned and time given to him to afflict Job. All the prayers of Job, sacrifices of Job, did not stop it. It happened. But what did the prayer of Job do? The prayer of Job sustained Job. That he remained resolute and strong in the word of the Father. So your prayer will do two things. Number one is sustain you and keep you in the midst of whatever is happening. Sustain your mind, sustain your soul and provide for you the right direction because as you pray, the Holy Spirit will be directing you. And then, two, your prayer will stop the work of the evil ones if it is not their time. 
Those are the two things your prayers will do for you. All right? So as you pray and you see things happening and they are not stopped, you know it is their time. But if it is not their time, Musa will cut it off. So we keep praying. We keep praying for Hong Kong. We keep praying for the city, wherever city where you are in. Keep praying. Sometimes, let me say this. Sometimes when the Most High allows the evil ones to do certain things, they go overboard. Let me give you an example. A certain prophet in the scripture, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the very prophet that made this statement. He says, when the Most High allowed the Gentiles to punish his people for their sin, they punished them much more than required. Satan always does this. When you give him one, he's going to get 10. <laughs> Always remember that. Satan does not stop at one. Once you give him one, expect that 10 will go before you even understand what is happening. 10 will go. Think about it. You eat this fruit, your eyes will open, you will be like God. Their eyes did not only open, they became dead. And all their generations in death. He's taking now the blood of the Messiah to rescue us. So whenever you give Satan one single chance, expect that the whole nine yards is gone. Very important. So sometimes when the Most High allow them to do certain things, they go overboard. So your prayer is also going to stop them in their tracks. That's why we need to be praying. We need to be praying. Don't just accept whatever you hear on the news on the face level. Pray. Watch and pray. That's what the Bible says. Watch. Be careful to look at everything carefully. Watch. That's what it is. When somebody says watch, it means carefully analyze everything. That's what it means. Watch and pray. Don't keep your eyes open and pray. No. I mean, don't keep your eyes closed, rather. Don't keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes open. Watch as you pray. Questions for me? Questions for me? I'm going to stop recording at this point.